your bedtime. You know that means lights out. What is up, everybody? Welcome to VR365. What is going on? Today, it is Thursday. It is 5.02 p.m. We're a little bit late. It is February 20th, and the stream status looks good. So I guess we're okay, even though it looked really bad right before we were about to start today's show. Now, I got to tell you guys, it's been a while since we've had a classic shiz show and you know what a shiz show is a shiz show is when i am woefully underprepared but i try to pretend like everything is fine and like everything is okay i'm totally prepared don't even worry about it we've got plenty of stories to talk about actually there has been some interesting things that have developed in the VR gaming industry just in the last 24 hours. Just in the last 24 hours. And I got to tell you, folks, my number one story of the day is not a good one. It is not a good one. It is so freaking disappointed that this continues to pop off. Ladies and gentlemen, can you guess... The number one story is coronavirus. It just won't get out of the headlines. Coronavirus, get out of here already. You and your goddamn molecules. Like, let's understand the DNA code and let's put this baby to bed. Because, dude, I've been talking about the coronavirus for a little while here and there. And I got to tell you, it has come back. And it has stabbed me directly in the heart. It has stabbed me in the heart, ladies and gentlemen, because on March 18th and March 19th and March 20th, I was planning on going to GDC. Actually, I was going to go on Wednesday the 18th and Thursday the 19th, and then I was probably going to drive home. But have you guys heard the news? Both Sony and Oculus have pulled out of GDC 2020. They're not showing up. Oculus is not going to be there, and Sony is not going to be there. And this is a major disaster for somebody like me that was planning on going to GDC. I don't even know if I'm going to go now. I don't even know if I'm going to go, because why am I going to risk coronavirus. I'm not really, honestly, I'm not really worried about coronavirus. But Sony and Oculus? I mean, that's VR in a nutshell. And last year, when I went to GDC, it was an incredible celebration. It was awesome. I had an interview with Sebastian there. I tried the Oculus Quest early, way be you know, this was before the Quest had been released, and I was playing Sports Scramble, and I was trying Oculus Quest games, and I was trying the Rift S. It had just been announced that day, you know, dropping uh, news that just came out, earth-shattering news with the Rift S. Got to try the Rift S right away. Got to try Stormland. I mean, I got to try uh, Ghost Giant. Ghost Giant was there by Sony, and Trover Saves the Universe was there too. I didn't end up playing Trover, but it was right there. And there's a lot of great things that I could have tried at GDC and now Oculus. I know it's all about me, right? It's all about me. Of course it is, man. There's two celebrations every year when it comes to VR gaming. It's GDC and it's Oculus Connect, whatever the hell it is. And so it was all about GDC and it was all about Oculus Connect 7. Are we on 7 now? And so I was going to go to this. I was going to be there on March 18th. I was going to be there on March 19th. And I was hoping to try out all kinds of amazing VR games, possibly new VR hardware. Probably not, but, you know, maybe something, right? And who knows what other exciting new announcements. I might still go. I might still go. Dude, it's going to be like a ghost town, though. I have a feeling like if GDC is not canceled altogether, if you really do go to GDC, it's going to be like half the normal people everywhere. It might be kind of cool 
from an aspect of like no lines to try anything because hardly anybody will be there. But, oh man, this coronavirus is just screwing things in a major way. Okay, so one of the things that I did want to mention right at the top of today's show, we are looking at what we might call a shiz show. And so I don't have a lot of videos and stuff prepared, but we are going to get into a lot of different news that is going to happen today. Jarillo says, China is the biggest polluter. Earth just simply answered. Well, dude, China is doing what we did in like the very early 1900s. It's just a delayed reaction. So now they're polluting like, it's not like we're innocent. Like good old USA has never polluted anything. No, we've always been great. I don't know. The USA has done some terrible shit when you think about pollution, I mean, think of the major oil accident that happened off uh, off Texas, right, in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, that was a net negative right there. Fukushima, Japan certainly did their job with Fukushima. So, you know, a lot of people have screwed up as far as that goes. But let's forget about the environment and let's talk about VR headsets and who would have guessed it? Who would have guessed it that we would get brand new VR headsets? Oh my God, brand new HTC Vive VR headsets announced. They are available right now. No, not exactly. This is HTC's Project Proton. And it is a preview, folks. It is a preview. These are basically renders. These are like their this, these are their concepts these are their ideas so there's no specs we have no specs whatsoever we don't know how many cameras these things are going to have we don't know what the resolution is we don't know one of them i believe is going to have like onboard processing like a quest we don't know what chip is running it probably xr2 right <clears throat> One of the exciting things about this, folks, could one of these be a quest killer? I mean, it's possible. It is possible. HTC could possibly sign with Qualcomm. One of these potentially could be quest killers. But anyway, this is Project Proton. And what is Project Proton all about? Well, if you've been watching closely in the VR gaming world, especially if you're watching closely at the Consumer Electronics Show that just happened in January, there appears that there's a new trend that is going on in the VR world, and the trim is go slim. Go slim. Everybody is trying to get a little bit slimmer. It started with the Panasonic goggles. It started with the Panasonic goggles. Actually, it started with Huawei. When Huawei had their first VR glasses that were super slim, that kind of started the whole thing off. And then, of course, Panasonic at uh, CES in January. Panasonic had those interesting goggles that they showed off. And then Pico also had a slim VR headset. And so that's kind of the trend is go slim, young gentlemen. Head west, young lad. Go slim and a lot of manufacturers are coming out with these new slimmer headsets. And you know what I think might be happening with this VR situation is that I think a lot of the manufacturers that are involved in the VR game have discovered that there's two distinct consumer classes with early VR adopters. The big one is gamers, you know, and there's plenty available for gamers, right? But there's another class of consumer that aren't gamers, but they're into the social thing. They're into VR chat. They're into alt space. They're into big screen. They're into the wave VR. They're into rec room. You know, they're into more simpler stuff, but it's all about this like metaverse thing and, and meeting other people and sharing views and having avatars and and creating your avatars and then more advanced uh, spaces that you're in, Facebook horizon, yada, 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 right? So there's non-gamers. And if you've got non-gamers, you might want to focus on comfort. You might want to focus on making it smaller. 
And so I think a lot of manufacturers are starting to cater to this market of non-gamers, older people, older people that maybe were never, never gamers to begin with. And they're trying to sell VR headsets, I think, to a whole new class. So that's what I think is going on here with Project Proton. Now, right now, they're just releasing these renders of what's going on. One of them is an all-in-one headset. They're calling it Proton AIO for now. And, uh, and also Proton Glass. And so you can see that one of them, you know, they're putting... Uh, they're putting the actual compute on the back end of one of them, it appears. And then that one just has, you know, I mean, we're, we're talking about slim VR goggles. And it does seem to be like it's this new category. The interesting thing is, though, Oculus has no answer to any of these slim, slim VR headsets. Oculus doesn't have a slim VR headset. Is this a problem? Are they going to have to address this? Could it be possible that a new version of the Oculus Go could compete very specifically in this slim market? You know, if you're going to fire up a VR headset to go into big screen, or if you're going into alt space, or you're going into the wave, maybe you don't need a, a big ginormous thing, you know? And so maybe that's what they're doing here. Okay, let's go ahead and see what folks are talking about in chat. Person Person says... The push to markerless tracking confused HTC. They should have just stuck with Lighthouse because that is what works. Jarillo says there was an HTC interview with the CEO. If you watch it, then you'll see it's clear they are waiting for 5G. Okay, so yeah, this may be a 5G play. That's another thing that a lot of these different uh, slim headsets, if they can have a 5G modem built into the headset, or if they can receive the 5G signal in some kind of way, then you don't have to have a big bulky headset because everything is happening off of the headset and it's being sent to the headset. But the 5G infrastructure, like, dude, it's going to take a long time. 5G is not going to really matter for probably at least three or four years. I just don't see it being a big thing. So this is more of a long-term kind of a deal. I don't know that we should get too excited about this, but I do feel like there are definitely these two different pathways that are developing. Slim headsets for non-gamers and then serious gaming headsets. And then the gaming headsets are going to vary to a major degree. And the slim headsets are going to are going to vary to a major degree. But you know what? There is additional HTC news that is going on. Did you guys know this apparently came out today as well? This was released by the Vive team on their blog that HTC now is going to have three different flavors to the HTC Vive Cosmos. So the Cosmos isn't going anywhere and it looks like they're doubling down on the Vive Cosmos. They're going to have the Vive Cosmos Elite. They're going to have the Vive Cosmos XR and they're also going to have the Vive Cosmos Play and then I guess there's just the regular regular Joe Vive Cosmos. So is there four different flavors of the HTC Vive Cosmos and all of this is being made possible by the modular faceplate. So we always kind of thought that the Vive Cosmos didn't have the most beautiful design to it, but the faceplate add-ons, they're interesting, folks. They really are interesting because Vive Cosmos XR is Quest Killer confirmed. No, but dude, it does have a whole bunch of extra cameras popping off. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this out. Change your plates, ladies and gentlemen. Interchangeable face plates. <clears throat> and you kind of wonder why more manufacturers might not consider having these face plates. Remember the old Xbox 360 days? Remember when you got the different face plate for the Xbox 360 to try to show off your style? And some people went with the wood grain Atari 2600 one, which I thought was pretty cheesy and didn't look very good. But that one was out there. Okay, so let's see what is going on here. Vive Cosmos Elite. 
This is elite, ladies and gentlemen. This is where they bypass the crappy ass inside out tracking. And it basically is your Vive Cosmos is now working with base stations and Vive controllers. So you're not even using the Cosmos controllers anymore. So you're switching up the faceplate. This one is just almost an admission of guilt that they're inside out. Like, why would you offer this? You're offering this because you know your inside out tracking is pretty much garbage. Okay, so the Vive Cosmos Elite Bundle will re retail for 900 and be available later in quarter one does it actually does it actually include all of this stuff that's a little bit more competitive um but yeah i mean these controllers the original vive wands dude these were state of the art like you wouldn't believe in 2016 when i got my vive when i got my vive and i had those vive wands they felt expensive Remember in Jurassic Park when the little kid picks up the, those goggles and the guy says, are they heavy? And the kid's like, yeah. He's like, put them back. They're expensive. If it's heavy, it's expensive, right? We learned that in Jurassic Park. And when I first got the Vive Wands, it felt like I was in Star Trek or something. It felt space age. It was pretty incredible. But you know what? Man, they felt busted really really quick that newness feeling did not last very long and then it became obvious that the vibe wands were big giant bulky things that didn't really make a hell of a lot of sense in the grand scheme of things but they're still using them they're still using the vibe wands that's kind of crazy okay now vibe cosmos xr vibe cosmos xr and once again once again we're seeing re we're seeing companies out there in the VR gaming space embrace the XR term. Is this XR thing gonna is it gonna stick? XR extended reality. Vive Cosmos XR is an upcoming standalone edition and faceplate for the modular Vive Cosmos that brings high quality XR pass through cameras to Vive Cosmos for the first time. Debuting as a developer kit in quarter two, Vive Cosmos XR allows near complete pass through field of view that utilizes the majority of the VR display up to 100 degrees to integrate real world and virtual content. So featuring high quality pass through cameras, Vive Cosmos XR combines a crisp view for overlays of the real world blended seam seamlessly into the virtual one. Um, and more information will be unveiled at GDC. Coronavirus not notwithstanding. Okay, that, you know, that brings me up to the question of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's pause real quick for the question of the day. Because here is the question of the day, and I probably should go look at um, comments for the last show, for the last question of the day that we had. But dude, the question of the day is what is the over and under on when GDC is going to be officially canceled? Like, is GDC seriously going to happen? Like, like, straight up, that's the question of the day. Is GDC going to happen? Or is GDC going to be canceled real quick, very soon? Here's the deal. I locked down my Airbnb, but I got cancelization rights up until March 4th. So they better decide it pretty damn soon. But I don't know, man. Is Can GDC still do this? Like everybody's pulling out. If like there were any confirmed cases of the coronavirus at GDC and more people got infected, there it's not happening. It's not happening. I might as well cancel my Airbnb right now, right? I might as well cancel my Airbnb right now. But anyway, that's the question of the day, folks. How long until GDC is canceled? One week? Two weeks? A couple of days? Or if you if you love the wild card, GDC will never be canceled. <clears throat> Don't think so. Don't think so. But anyway, there might be some more news around the time of when GDC would happen. That's the thing. All these companies still need to release this information. So there, there's still going to be information that's going to come out 
possibly very soon, stuff that would have been at Mobile World Congress, announcements still need to be made. So these announcements are going to be made like one-off little press conferences, and they're just going to hit the internet, and bam, they're going to be on Verge, they're going to be on Engadget, they're going to be on Wired, they're going to be on Polygon, whatever, all these different websites, and announcements are just going to happen, and then trailers are just going to pop up on YouTube, and I guess that's how we're going to get our announcements with a lot of this stuff. It's a weird situation, folks. Okay, now, Vive Cosmos Play. Vive Cosmos Play opens the door for new to VR users, making it easier than ever before to step into premium VR. Vive Cosmos Play uses four camera da 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 da. da. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I don't really understand what Vive Cosmos Play does in the whole equation. So it's really pretty much about Vive Cosmos Elite, and that gives you the better tracking. And then at that point, when you have better tracking, and let's say you're using index controllers with it, I guess that would be the idea, right? Like if you're going to go down the Vive Cosmos route and you're going to get this faceplate that allows you to use Steam VR tracking, then you're basically rolling. You're going to be rolling with Valve index controllers, you're going to be rolling with the base stations, and you're going to roll with the Vive Cosmos as your headset. <clears throat> and under that scenario, it might not be too shabby. It might be a decent competitor. It might be a decent a decent entry as far as that concerned. And then Vive Cosmos XR, this is where they get freaky with it, ladies and gentlemen, because that is a lot of visible cameras. If I'm not mistaken, there's two cameras right there. They're adding two more. You still got two on the side. Could this be the first headset where the dream that I dreamed is possible? Because I want to see a future. I want to see a future where when you put on a VR headset, you immediately get full color, full color pass through for the environment that you're in. Immediately, bam. So you're just seeing your reality as it is normally. So there's no discombobulation. You completely remove discombobulation from it what by by going with the full color pass through <clears throat> and then you see a little indicator flashing would you like to enter vr or whatever it is you know when you click on the button and then bam you go into vr and that should be the possibility and then also hand tracking like built in super accurate hand tracking this is the future of vr so you can put on a headset and Bam, you're instantly got pass through. Your hands are instantly tracked. You can you can activate VR and you can screw around with it. Now, here's the problem though with Vive Cosmos XR. It's great in theory and it's going to start off as a developer kit. But the problem is, don't you guys remember those videos that came out? Don't you remember that one video that came out? I probably don't have it on this computer, so I'm not going to look for it. But that one video where that lady is like, you, you know, she's playing like whack-a-mole and it was for the Vive Pro I and we were going to get all these little AR games for the HTC Vive with the eye tracking and with those cameras that were on the, uh, on the Vive Pro, right? Did we ever get any of that? Did any of that ever come out? So it's like you can add all these extra cameras and you can talk about how there's going to be all this AR stuff, but you better hire seven or eight developers to start banging away on some real AR, AR actual content because we didn't see that the last time. I was disappointed with that. So there's a lot of news that is going on in the HTC Vive world. Uh, news, of course, with the Vive Cosmos and also news with their uh, their new prototypes. So let's see what folks are talking about over in chat. I'm going to go ahead and bounce back over here. Let's switch up this trailer. I need to see full chat. Uh, hold on one second here. I'm just going to throw on a random trailer little mix. And uh, let's see. I'm going to see what folks are talking about in chat because we've been talking a lot about all these different headsets. And let's see what people are talking about. Oh yeah, Index, coronavirus is real. Dude, the coronavirus is just shitting all over the VR world. Coronavirus is shitting all over the VR world. 
confirmed because dude it's it's ruining quest stock it's ruining index stock right before half-life alex you know what do you call it valve is not going to delay half-life alex so they're locked into march 23rd so nothing's going to happen with that but they wanted to have like a big burst of stock arrive prior to March 23rd. And that's not going to happen with the goddamn coronavirus affecting things in a major way. Oh, question of the day. When is GDC going to be canceled? Stephen Mullen says 10 days from now. 10 days. No, you know what? If they're going to cancel it, here's the thing. If GDC is going to get canceled... It's going to be canceled like by next Wednesday. It'll be canceled by next Wednesday. You'll either hear it tomorrow. Like tomorrow we hear it's canceled. Or you're going to hear it like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. You'll hear it's canceled. But they they can't drag it on. People have like hotel reservations and airplane flights. They got to cancel it sooner rather than later. If they're going to cancel it, they got to nut up and they got to deal with it. All right, so anyway, let's see what folks are talking about over here in chat. Person Person says, I still use my Vive wand sometimes, even though I have index controllers. Still love the Vive wands. <laughs> yeah, I remember, dude, when I first got my Vive wands, I was like, these are fucking badass. I loved the feel of the of like the, the material, like the texture of it. And the touch pads, it felt so space age, man. It felt really like an incredible thing. But then like just two years later, they felt like these big gigantic things that I'm holding. That just, like once I got the Oculus Touch controllers and they melted into my hands like none other, the Vive Wands just seemed like these gigantic oblong things. Like, like why do they still have these Vive Wands? Can you believe that it took forever for them to redesign the controller. They come out with the Vive Cosmos controller that nobody seems to be happy with, and it doesn't seem to work very well, and it's incredibly heavy, and it uses batteries like it's going out of style. So there's that. All right, let's see here. Um, yeah, Shirzad Khan City says, Vive Wands. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing but scratching my back. Yeah, Vive Wands. Yeah, they are good for scratching your back. They are good for scratching your back. Um, Rendered Reality says, Screens in Cosmos are nice, though. That's about it. And I like the flip-up. Well, you know, the one good aspect of it is if you're going down the road of Vive Cosmos Elite, then you're getting the quality screen, and you could be using it. You know, somebody's going to be playing... Well, when does the Vive Cosmos Elite come out? Like if it came out in time for Alex, you could be playing Alex in that headset. You could be using index controllers. And, you know, I don't know how good the headset is. I doubt that the glare is quite as bad as the Valve Index. So there is that. Probably has an advantage in glare factor. All right. Well, you know what? I do have one game that I wanted to talk about. So why don't we go ahead and transition into uh, a new game that I've been playing, and then we'll get back into the news. There's a lot of other news stories that are going on all over the uh, all over the interwebs, but I did want to talk about a guilty pleasure game that I've been playing recently, and that is Orion 13. Okay, so there's this game Orion 13. In fact, going back to the webinator, we'll check out the Steam page really quick. Um, yeah, heading back over here. This is Orion 13. It launched on February 13th. It's been out for a little while. Metro VR Studios is a developer. I believe Paradise Decay has done a video on this, so you can probably go check it out. This game, <laughs> this game has some serious problems in terms of like they did this like weird locomotion thing that makes no sense, really. Like your your feet are like planted and you have to you have to make sure that you're standing in the right spot and you have to do the snap turning and make sure that you keep your feet in the right spot or you can really get discombobulated in this game but but there's something interesting about this game there is something cool about this game there's something 
there's something kind of like Max Hedrum about it. I don't know. There's some, and, and the bad guy reminds me of the bad guy in Time Bandits. And it's so incredibly colorful. The world is silly. There's a lot of voiceover work. And it's an interesting game. It is Technicolor like a mofo. This game is ridiculous ridiculous with the techno color if you want to see a lot of vibrant colors on screen orion 13 is great for that the world is you know this weird cyberpunk world there's some there's some interesting things going on but then also also no it, it kind of all falls apart as well and 20 bucks 20 bucks is pretty harsh when you're in the world of the asgard effect and the Stormland effect, and Boneworks effect, and Walking Dead Saints and Sinners effect. There's so many great games that are out right now that it it's difficult. You know who who do you sell this game to? Because brand new VR players are either going to be buying some of these really big monster games that have just hit that everybody's raving about, or they're probably going to be buying a bunch of classic VR games that everybody knows about that are now on sale. So it doesn't really leave a lot of room for these weird eclectic games. This one to arrive from Metro VR Studios. It's basically going to sell to the super hardcore VR enthusiasts that just want something oddball and something different. And that's basically what Orion 13 is all about. It is just a really weird, it's a weird little world, man. It's a weird world with weird sound effects, a pretty decent voiceover. When I'm playing this game, there were certain times where I'm like, you know what? They really tried to do something with this game. And I believe there basically was one main guy one main guy that programmed this game because I was talking to another guy that's part of the developers, but he really came on late and is pretty much just helping him market this game and that it was primarily one guy that built this entire game for the most part. And there's actual voice work and, and they try to do little cinemas and, and um, they probably did some motion capture that they were able to capture in VR and do all that stuff. And it's pretty cool. And I can tell you that if this game came out in 2016, when VR was young and VR was brand new, people would be really into this game. But in the year 2020, it is a bit of a hard sell. But I will say this. Here's the one thing they really do have going for them. Did they pick the perfect time to drop their game or what? Because right now... It has been very quiet. You know, it's quiet on the Eastern Front in the VR gaming world. Since Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, there has been really nothing of interest on PC VR. I mean, nothing really major, major on PC VR. Now, we've had Oculus Quest games that have been dropping recently, but on PC VR, not much has been going on. So anyway, Orion 13... Very much an oddball kind of game, very Technicolor, very weird, uh, very vibrant, but I kind of like it. Now, now the worst thing about it, though, is the combat, which is the main, like it's the main aspect of the game. What I'm mostly enjoying with this game is the whacked out colors, the, the soundtrack, the cyberpunk stuff the environments, the bad guy, the cheese factor. There is a really high cheese factor with this game. But if you roll with it, if you're rolling with the cheese factor and enjoying the cheese factor, like if you take this game seriously, you're going to be very, very disappointed in this game. But if you treat it as more of kind of like a comedy thing, it's actually pretty cool. But the problem is the combat, the combat basically just turns into waggle. It's basically like We Waggle being revived in 2020. So that's the disappointing thing there. Now you do have some like lasers that you can shoot. So you can kind of go with a more long distance combat because the melee is basically Waggle in this game. So that's what I've seen so far, but I'm very early in the game. I've really only seen the first two levels, level one and level two. And I do love the colors. Like, here's a picture. This picture right here, this is from level two. Tell me that isn't colorful as hell. That looks good in a VR headset. It sounds good. 
there's parts of it that are pretty good. So um, not absolutely terrible. Let's go ahead and switch back. Let's see if anybody has played this. I do have a couple of super chatters that I need to thank. Uh, let's see here, scrolling through. Uh, hmm, it's not showing the super chatters over there. But I know Conrad Lawrence uh, did a super chat. Just checking if it still works. Yep, Conrad and Ray Pope also with a super chat. So thank you so much, Ray Pope. Thank you so much, Conrad Lawrence. Also, apologies if anybody signed up to the Patreon or did a PayPal donation like in the last couple of days. I did not check before today's show, but I definitely will check before Sunday's show and thank the appropriate people, of course. Um, okay, so Eric Hartley says, I can recommend a ton of $2 oddball games instead of a $20 one. Yeah, no, uh, this is not a recommendation. It's a recommendation if you got money to, like if you just buy every VR game out there and there's people that do this, trust me. There's people that buy damn near every VR game that's even remotely interesting. Luckily, we have these people because the industry desperately needs them uh, because there's some good stuff in here. There's actually, so I, when I was playing it, I was thinking, man, if only they had hired like a seasoned producer that could come in and just add a little bit more polish to things because there's actually some pretty good aspects of this. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Rendered Reality says, I remember in 2016 watching every day for new VR releases, hoping something good would come out. Yeah, those were the good old days when we'd accept almost anything. Uh, Eric, Eric Hartley does say that the combat does improve, improve a bit in the second and third levels. Okay, yeah, I played some of the second level. I didn't think like the combat really improved in that level. But interesting design nonetheless. All right, why don't we go ahead and head back to the news because there still is a lot of news that is going on. One of the biggest news stories, well, you know, we found out, of course, that Sony has pulled out of GDC. So, see, Sony started this off. It's Sony's fault, goddammit. It's Sony's fault that GDC is now going to get canceled. It's going to happen, too. Sony pulled out of PAX East. That started a chain reaction. And then Sony pulled out of GDC. And then Oculus pulled out of GC. Everything is screwed up, man. And I was going to have so much fun in San Francisco for two nights. And now what am I going to do? <clears throat> Okay, so we did get some patent designs for potentially a new PlayStation VR controller that is mimicking the design of the Valve Index to some degree. Now, we've seen some different patent designs over the years. We've seen several different patent designs that Sony has had, and there's one major beautiful thing about all of these designs, one thing that they do not sh uh, share ladies and gentlemen, is a giant light bulb on the end of them. So that is the most beautiful thing about all these patent designs because basically all these patent designs are telling me that Sony's next VR product is going to use a completely different tracking method than the original PlayStation VR, which is a beautiful thing because it needs to be dropped like a bad habit. But... The fact that there's going to be two different tracking systems and the backwards compatibility question, there's a lot of unanswered questions. I'm telling you, I still need to do a major PlayStation VR related episode where the, the entire episode is nothing but speculation about PlayStation 5 and what PlayStation 5 means to somebody that gives a rat's ass about VR and, and how does Sony navigate all of these things? I'm telling you, I could talk for three hours about it because there's all these different factions of PSVR players that are going to be affected by this and some of them are going to get screwed. There's, there's no way Sony can make everybody happy. It's impossible. It's literally impossible for them to make everybody happy. Somebody is getting boned and no one is really talking about this. 
And we haven't had any speculation about this. No one is even thinking about it because, you know, I guess we're waiting for more information from Sony. But here's the patent. So basically what it does, very similar to the valve index, you rest your fingers in some very natural places. And there's basically sensors that are going to let them know if you happen to lift your fingers off of those locations. And you lift them off of the location, it's going to assume that the finger is extended all the way. You touch it back, it's going to, you know, it's going to assume. And also there is this strap that goes around the hand. So we could be looking at a situation, again, very similar to the valve index, where you could be basically having your hands completely let go of the controller. And then when you're picking up an object, you grab it. And so you can kind of get this pseudo grabbing sensation. Um, looks very basic with the sharp angles. Looks like a garage door opener. This looks like a garage door opener circa circa 1976 or something. Not the most advanced design. We got to hope there's a thumbstick on this puppy somewhere. Looks like possibly four buttons, a thumbstick, and then of course the trigger button, maybe some kind of touch pad. Is that a touch pad? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, these are just the patent designs. There's all kinds of patent designs that we've seen so far. This will probably link us to some of the old patent design. Yeah, this was the old original one. This one looked more like uh, this one here. You know, it ha it looks like a little microphone in the middle there or like a PlayStation uh, Vita nub. And then it's got these buttons around the side, little weird buttons. Looks like some kind of Star Trek device as well. So yeah, lots of different controllers are in the works for PSVR 2. And the most beautiful thing about it, no dildo is on the end of it. So completely new tracking design that's going to be completely dumped. And it's going to be super chaotic to see what happens in terms of how this is all going to work out. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to Road to VR. Um, yeah, so in the news, we kind of already discussed this a little bit, but I did want to mention this. Coronavirus appears to be uh, appears to be affecting the index stock as well. So there will be index stock. Valve is going to live up to their word. The problem is it's going to be extremely limited. This is just a bad situation, man. Just unfortunate role. Like we had the, the most beautiful situation happen to us in kind of like mid-January with the release of The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, a smash hit of a VR game after getting stuff like Stormland and Boneworks and Asgard's Wrath and Pistol Whip and Eastfire 1 and Budget Cuts 2 and Until... Uh, until you fall and all these different great games that came out over the last like four months and then to have another bam arrive with the walking dead saints and sinners everything was looking so nicely for the vr gaming world but shortages of the oculus quest and shortages of the valve index has kind of thrown a wet blanket over the entire vr gaming industry right now because we're missing out on sales. And the only people that are benefiting from this entire situation are scalpers. And God damn it, I hate scalpers. I I did some of it in the past. I will admit, I've bought extra cons. I tried to profit off different... I've done some bad things, folks. I've done bad things. And I, I hope I've paid for it all by now. This was years and years ago. I did some bad things, ladies and gentlemen, but scalping, man, that's who's having a dream right now is scalpers are having a dream. Okay, so somebody in chat did mention Media Molecule, did mention Dreams for PlayStation VR, and you know what? This is pretty incredible. Now, one thing I failed to, was able to do before we started today's show, I did not get a video for this. I wanted to get a video it was Shuhei Yoshida, and he was basically sitting at this desk, and it was showing off what could be um, a VR game for Dreams. And dude, Dreams is about to drop a bomb. This is one of the hidden things in the VR gaming world that a lot of people might not be paying a ton of attention to. First of all, a lot of people don't give PlayStation VR much recognition in the first damn place, and... 
maybe they're right to do so because what the hell has come out on PlayStation VR in like the last four months has been almost nothing on PlayStation VR except for, uh, what do you call it, Shadow Legend, which was very good, and I played it on PSVR, and, and it was actually quite good on PlayStation VR. But it's been pretty dry. It's been pretty quiet over there in PSVR world. And the VR version of Dreams being a really, really, really big deal, this could be huge. This could be a really huge thing for VR. So apparently it's going to be coming at any possible time. The update to Dreams could be arriving at any possible time. So looking forward to that. That is awesome. Oh, did you guys hear about this? Boneworks is now available in the Oculus Store. This is crazy. I never knew that it wasn't. I never knew that it wasn't. I mean, I ended up we ended up getting our version of it on Steam, but I didn't know that it wasn't on the Oculus Store. That's kind of crazy. So Boneworks is finally on the Oculus Store. I imagine... They probably had to do that major patch and they basically were waiting for that major patch. And Boneworks has had a major patch. I actually jumped back into Boneworks just the other day. I didn't play Boneworks. Trip on this, folks. When I fired up Boneworks, it said that I last played it like December 28th. Like I haven't played Boneworks in the year 2020. And that whole entire time, I didn't play any Boneworks whatsoever. And so it was a pretty good time to jump back into Boneworks because of the major update. There's new save points, all kinds of uh, little patches and stuff like that. So that was really cool too. Um, oh, MRTV had a super chat. Damn it. You know what? I'm missing all kinds of super chats. Okay, yeah. MRTV with a super chat. VR365 is very, very good. It is. It is very, very good. And um, yeah, Conrad Lawrence with a super chat, Ray Pope with a super chat. Okay, I think I've got everybody there. Thank you so much, MRTV. Awesome. And dude, MRTV, are you going to get the coronavirus? Are you coming to San Fran? Are we going to have a rematch, another interview? Um, did I miss other ones? Um, so I'm looking here. It shows MRTV. Thank you so much, MRTV, for your super chat. Conrad Lawrence for his super chat and Ray Pope. Those are the ones that it's showing me as I'm scrolling up here. Um, let me go back into my other look. Uh, yeah, it won't show me too much over there. I, I'll eventually thank all the super chatters um, again in the future. I, I plan to do that. I'll figure out, I'll figure out a way to do that. All right, so uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and head back over to a road to VR. And so yeah, what else is in the news? So basically we covered the fact that everybody's pulling out of GC, GDC, we covered the HD, HTC Vive Cosmos family of headsets. Look at this. Yeah, the Vive Cosmos family. So basically, Vive Cosmos Play, $500 entry level. You get the Cosmos controllers. Then you have a Vive Cosmos at $700. Um, which has six cameras. You have the Vive Cosmos Elite. Vive, you get Vive One controllers, and it includes two base stations. So that's the full package. And Vive Cosmos XR price is unannounced. It's basically starting off as a developer kit. Yeah, so it's really, it's going to be weird. So they're kind of going the Pimax route. Vive Cosmos XR is definitely the most interesting one of the bunch. It is definitely the most interesting one of the bunch. But yeah, my concern with all of this is it's great to have all the XR, AR, whatever kind of pass through you want to talk about, but you got to follow it up with actual product. You know, you have to have actual software that shows it off. All right. So I just want to see uh, if there were any other major stories that I've missed. Again, I did say at the start of today's episode that we're basically doing a shiz show today. Unfortunately, um, oh, Downpour Interactive uh, provides an update on Onward Quest. Uh, Downpour Interactive. Okay, uh, let's see. Onward was confirmed to be coming to Facebook standalone VR headset in mid-2019. Okay, that obviously didn't happen. Um, hmm. So they don't really have any information there. Uh, no update there. I think we're expecting it now, probably summer, summer of this year for Onward on the Oculus Quest. 
Um, I was trying to see what other stories I missed here. And... Yeah, no, nothing really. Okay, let's go back over to Road to VR. All right, checking Road to VR. I think I've pretty much covered most of these stories as well. Um, yeah. All right, so why don't we do this? Let's bounce over to Steam because one thing I was checking, virtual reality, let's go ahead and look at games that have been released recently. This is something that we haven't covered in a long time. And Counter Fight 4 is available. That's nine bucks. They've done a whole bunch of these. This one is basically like the Starbucks version because it's pretty much coffee and pastries and stuff like that. So uh, Counter Fight 4 recently came out. This game came out, No Kingdom or No King, No Kingdom VR. This released on February 16th. And I wasn't tracking to this game, but you know what? Looking at all the screenshots and stuff and watching the video for it, this actually does look kind of cool. I mean, it looks pretty interesting because it looks like you're going to do this like overhead RTS, but then you could also transfer down to the field of battle and actually take people on on ground level. And then, you know, it's got this interesting kind of art style going on. So this is called No King, No Kingdom VR, and it's positive. Um, you can get it for 12 bucks right now. The normal price is 20 bucks, so it is kind of a discount. This might be the better way to go rather than, say, Orion 13, even though Orion 13 is really different. But yeah, I wasn't tracking this game, wasn't paying attention to it. Not the greatest logo. That's probably why. I have a habit, folks, when I'm looking at upcoming Steam VR games, a lot of times what I'll do is just look at the logos and I'll say, huh, do any of these logos look like halfway professional? Like if I was looking at this page of logos, the one logo that would jump out at me is looking pretty professional is Silicon Rising. This is the one that would jump out at me. This, of course, is a new release, mostly positive, kind of a time crisis. I have not played this and my policy is I'm not going to be requesting codes from every developer under the sun because if I request a code, I feel like I really got to cover the game. And so I'm going to try to pick and choose the games that I covered. So I didn't end up bothering with this one. This one has node-based teleportation that you're basically doing. Um, it kind of, it looks good in a trailer. Like this looks really good in a trailer and the screenshots look pretty cool as well. So it looks impressive. Like that looks like something out of iRobot right there. And I love the iRobot scene. That looks really beautiful. Like that could be a great background for a screenshot. That looks pretty cool. So it looks good. It has mostly positive on the ratings. Came out recently, 20 bucks. Although I heard it's basically a wavy ass wave shooter, but more of a time crisis type game. Uh, with node-based teleportation. So that one recently came out. Scraper Gauntlet is out. And I got to tell you, as somebody that is a huge fan of the original Scraper, I'm a big fan of the original Scraper game. I just have not really paid attention to Scraper Gauntlet because I heard from the very beginning that it's basically a wave shooter. And I just like, eh, I just don't really have an interest in playing a wave shooter here in the year 2020. But I've heard it might be a really damn good wave shooter. And you can get it at a pretty deep discount. You can get it for 10 bucks, but they do have the bundle pack for 20. You get both scrapers. And the first scraper, scraper first strike, I feel is a damn good game. And if you've got a Valve Index, it is one of the prettiest games I've ever seen on a Valve Index. One of the prettiest games I've ever seen on a Valve Index. Absolutely. Scraper, first strike on Valve Index. Well, alrighty, folks. So you know what? I'm pretty much stalling in terms of like having content and stuff to cover. So we're going to go ahead and call this episode. Apologies that I wasn't a little bit better prepared with more stories and more videos and things to go to. 
but that's basically going to go ahead and wrap it up for this particular episode of VR365 Live. I will be back on Sunday on Twitch at 11.30 a.m. Of course, tape delayed. It will be on YouTube probably about 20 hours later. So go ahead and check me out on Twitch this Sunday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time. I promise much more prepared for that one. I will have stories dialed up, videos dialed up, all kinds of things dialed up. I'll be ready to go for that one. But you know what? Every once in a while, we just have to do a wing stop edition episode. Just wing it, make it happen, and that's what it is. All right, guys. I will see you guys on... Um, I'll see you on Sunday at 11.30. Take it easy. Later.